Closed captioning for the Casey Malone Show is sponsored by Hunter Stevens Land Title Agency. Integrity, service, and commitment you can trust. Oh, yeah. Casey Malone is serving up local. It's time for the stories of our region, the tastes, the sights, the sounds, and the people in and around the valley. Get ready for some local flavor on the Casey Malone Show. Today we visit the farm at Premium Pastured Meats, and I get a weaving lesson from Linda at Lamb Handwoven Rugs. But first, I'll share with you a family favorite, spinach meatloaf. Today I am going to share with you a recipe that me and my family have been making for years. And the other night I made this meatloaf for dinner and it was so delicious and I'm thinking, why have I not shared this with my viewers? So you are going to taste spinach meatloaf. There are very few ingredients, they're easy to come by And let me tell you, with very little effort, you have a delicious main course. I love meatloaf. When I don't know what to make, I'll make meatloaf. And this recipe is easy to throw together, and in under an hour, really, you can have dinner on the table. So let's get going, and we'll go over the ingredients for my spinach meatloaf. For this recipe, you'll need one and a half pounds of meatloaf mix, one 10 ounce package of frozen chopped spinach, one envelope of onion soup mix, one egg, one half cup of breadcrumbs, plain or seasoned, three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, fresh ground black pepper and salsa. Well, as you can see, there's very few ingredients. Now, a lot of people, I better take my ring off first because I'll be mixing this by hand. Um, A lot of people like just ground beef. But I like a meatloaf mix, which is equal parts veal, uh, ground pork, and beef. And you can even use up to two pounds, but one and a half pounds seems to make quite a bit. And if you want, you can cook down the spinach, but why bother? I buy that 10 ounce block of frozen and I let it thaw at room temperature, or you can thaw it in your microwave. But the main thing is to squeeze out the excess water once it's thawed. So I've already done that. And you dump that in. Spinach is very important in this dish. Then one egg, easy peasy there. And then you use breadcrumbs, about a half a cup. I put seasoned in, but it isn't needed. And here is the big secret recipe. Nothing fancy, you don't even have to buy you know, the brand name, you can buy the store, just the dried onion soup mix. And I use a whole envelope. They come like two in a box. And see it has the dried onions in there. Another secret ingredient I think is the Worcestershire. Love this stuff. And just a few pinches of black ground pepper because you don't want to really add any salt because there is sodium and salt in the onion soup mix. That's it. Now you just get those hands in there. There's no better way to mix meatballs, meatloaf, whatever you're doing, and you just thoroughly mix it all together. And you just want to make sure the breadcrumbs, the Worcestershire, the spinach and the egg is all evenly distributed. All right, so uh, you could use the loaf pan, but you know, I don't like to use the loaf pan. I like to use like a nine by nine. And rather than the loaf shape, what I do is I make it like a round all these ingredients out of here. You don't want to waste. And you form it in it's like a round disc. Because I don't really want it to be higher on top. You want it to cook evenly. And then that way it cooks quicker too. And then what I like to do instead of ketchup, ugh, 
not a big fan of ketchup, except on my french fries. That's about the only time I eat ketchup. Or my cocktail sauce when I'm eating cocktail shrimp. So, okay, now what I do is I just make a little well right down the middle. Or you could do a couple. See? Do, 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 do. And then I take salsa, whatever your favorite kind is. I like paste. And then you just pour it right down in the little well. See? And it adds just a nice little kick when it's cooking. Isn't that pretty? There you go. Meatloaf. That's what's for dinner. So what I'll do is I have the oven preheated to 350. You want it to cook to about 160 degrees internal temperature. I'm going to put this in and start watching it at about 45 minutes. Sometimes it's an hour depending on the stove or the oven rather. So I will put this in and we'll be having meatloaf in just a little bit. Mommy, we have been making this recipe for so long. Where, where did we get it? Chrissy, or Chrissy. My sister Chrissy, <laughs> our, our, yes. She came up with the idea she of the came spinach. Up with the spinach. One I, of the girls that she works with brought it to the office. And that wow. Was it. Our Chrissy. I know. <laughs> here's, to Chrissy. Yeah, here's to Chrissy. Yeah, here's to Chrissy. Wow, we. That's funny. I <laughs> brought a bottle. This is like the house red. Ken loves it. This isn't like a oh, Chiani Classico Chiani. or Reserva. It is just your everyday bola. It is delicious, light. And, it is good. Um, yeah, and, and it's very, very reasonable. So I'm used to always seeing Chianti in a raffia bottle. Yes, it's not. Yeah, I, I left the basket at home. <laughs> it, we've moved on. Yes. But this is really a delicious recipe. Go to my website. CaseyMaloneShow.com and look for the spinach meatloaf recipe. It will soon become one of your weekly or monthly go-tos for mm -hmm. dinner. It's All really right. good. It's really good and even Jelaine likes it. I love it. All right, so, cheers. Cheers to us. All we do is cheers. No, sir, yeah. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. Well, we are here at the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery, and I am with Rude the Dude. And let me tell you, there is no place I'd rather be than this patio. It is beautiful. Sunday fun day is every day. <laughs> well, yeah, Casey, winter's almost over. So the Thank patio you. season is coming. Uh, we have one of the biggest patios in Boardman. Uh, every Saturday, live entertainment. Other special events that we do, we, saw, we have a car cruise. Every Wednesday, taking up the whole lot. It's a great event, a lot of beautiful cars. Our farm to table menu. We still support local, local ingredients, local products, meat and cheese local. Uh, we also have our happy hour, Monday through Friday, half off all 41 craft beers on tap. And a lot of local yeah. beers and tons there of local too. beer, tons of local beers. But it's just a great time, great time to come out and enjoy Magic Tree. The living is easy at the Magic Tree Pub and Eatery. Cheers. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Bernard. I've been giving the people of our valley free advice for over 30 years, and my message has never changed. If you're involved in a car, truck, or motorcycle accident, don't try to handle it yourself. Call a lawyer. A lawyer will be your representative, dealing with doctors, medical insurance, and all the red tape that you may face. Hiring a lawyer doesn't mean you'll end up in court, and remember, there are no upfront fees on personal injury cases. That's good advice. Need a lawyer? Learn more at ElizabethBernardLaw.com. Mayflower Wilm is your full-service, independent insurance agency. We work with several insurance companies to offer you choices for your insurance needs. We'll find the right product at the right price. Personal, business, farm, life, trust Mayflower Wilm. You focus on what's important, we'll take care of the details. Mayflower Wilm, close by with three locations to serve you.
Family Brothers has a great choice of quality cheeses. We use our relationship with Old World Houses to specially select the product and then have it custom cut and packaged by our own local artisans. At Ruley Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Is it time to update your color style? RNS Paint will assist you with your choice of over 3,400 Benjamin Moore colors. Vibrant, durable, and easy to apply. Be current, be stylish. Shop RNS Paint. I'm out on another field trip with Tank and Phil down here in Alliance at Premium Pastured Meats. And this really is a family operation. As you can see, the Sharp family, we've got Jessica and Corbin and Lincoln and Seth. And you've got cows, pigs, chickens. I mean, this is a real menagerie out here. It sure is. We try to keep it diverse when we're raising animals, you know, they all work together and have their place on our farm. And this is non-GMO, this is, uh, you know, no hormones, I mean, you really take care in the way you raise your animals. Right, we don't use any petroleum-based fertilizers, any petroleum-based herbicides, pesticides, you know, we try to do everything as pure as possible so we can provide the most wholesome product that we can and the highest, pro the highest quality product that we can. And you know, you can get all these meats. A lot of them are frozen, but if you make proper arrangements, you'll get them fresh. And you have turkeys around uh, all year or just around Thanksgiving? They're more of a seasonal item, but we're starting to grow them more to have them all year long as well, because everyone loves turkey, you know? <laughs> I love turkey, and it's, it's the other white meat. And uh, Jessica, you don't look like your typical farmer's wife. I mean, you really, uh, how do you like being down here at the farm? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was out here this morning in my boots and cleaning up the strawberries and everything. So, you caught me at a good moment, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I mean, these boys, I'm sure they keep you active. As a um, as a wife here, what are your duties on the farm? Keep it all moving and keep everybody fed, everybody in clean clothes as best we can till they go outside and come back, and. I don't know, the backbone, I guess, would you say, huh? Am I in charge or are you in charge? Exactly. Okay. So Jessica is in charge. So Seth, you uh, have some new additions to the family. There was uh, two litters born? Yeah, there was two litters born within the last oh, 30 hours or so, so yeah. So how many piglets were born? 12 new piglets total, and you can see these two moms are kind of tag teaming it and keeping them safe there, working well, on it together. Is there a particular uh, breed of pig that, that you like to raise? We do a crossbred operation, but Berkshire is what we've been using a lot lately, so that all these pigs will at least be half Berkshire this year. So, yeah. And what makes Berkshire stand out? Uh, it's a flavor, you know, and they do well. They're good mothers, and they do well foraging. So out at pasture, you know, eating grasses and things like that. And I mean, how big do these pigs get? What, three, four hundred pounds? Right, I, uh, about 325 is my target lately to send them at. So yeah. When we are talking au natural, we are also talking your own manure. That's right. Now how does one go about collecting the manure from all your different animals? Um, there's a skid steer unilotor we use. Uh, Caterpillar, my buddy actually does it for me. It comes in and scoops it up and puts it in the pile. But it's also important, like you see, they need a good carbon source for the manure to mix with and bind with so it's more stable and fertilizes the field over a longer period of time. It so you mix it with the straw? Yeah, and then compost it. That's what we're doing now. We're actually going to be spreading that this week, so that's a well, big I'm week. sorry I missed that because I'm sure this place is going to be very fragrant. Now, is there one manure from the animals that's better than the others for fertilization? Chicken's the best. Chicken is? Yep, chicken has the highest nutrients and it also kills all the, like, any seeds that would go through it, so. You were saying that you rotate all the fields and you keep moving your cows around? Yeah, it's the way to do it is to rotate your cows every 24 hours or so, um, so they always have fresh green grass. Right now we're not set up and doing that because we're currently making hay this week, but that's the idea and we had to get them out to pasture to get them eating the grass, you know? And they, I mean, we really, it's all this rain and that, that's been good for us, hasn't it? If you turn the cows out on the pasture when it's wet, it, uh, the, the cows will tear it up and it'll look like this, you know, so you got to 
make sure it's fit to turn them out so I can get the best grass. What difference do you see? I mean, really, you would know, you know, they're eating this all the time. But now that you switched over to um, their meats and that, I, w what is the difference that you've seen in the taste and the quality? It's completely different from commercial. It, it, the texture is not the same. The dark meat's true dark meat. It tastes like turkey. It tastes like a turkey's supposed to taste. The chicken tastes like chicken's supposed to taste. It's, it's completely, it's, it's apples and oranges. You, it's not the same product. If you get grass-fed, grass-fed is definitely better. And it's better for you. And what about you, Phil? I mean, you know, you, you are just loving it down here on the farm. Oliver. <laughs> you, you know, it's great acres here. Honestly, Casey, this is my happy place. Touching the animals, you know, hanging out with the farmers, understanding firsthand the way he 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 raises his beef and his his pigs and and the turkeys and the chickens and him and I the, this this is a happy day for us you know this is our, our these field trips we love we wish we could do more of this but smaller footprint supporting local healthier food this is the way to go so now uh, everybody's gonna want some of your pork beef chicken what's the best way to order it well you can give us a call and come out to the farm or you can order online. We have a website, premiumpasturedmeats.com. Um, there's a few places in Youngstown you can go. Uh, Foodie Crave online market as well, and the Lake to River online market. Uh, Tank, I think we should get some chicken livers before we leave, and uh, let's go to town on that. Okay, home in. The Casey Malone Show will be right back with more local flavor. To own a business where your name's on the window can be pretty cool. That's my family. My name is Danny Catullo, and I'm the owner of Catullo Prime Meats. My grandfather started the business in 1962. I was able to take our old style butcher shop and bring it out to the new age using e-commerce to get our products to more customers. When we started shipping, there was not a ton of information out there. That's where we really worked with FedEx so they could be able to help us with our perishable shipping. We were taking on new purchases that we never had to make before. Boxes, coolers, ice packs, anything that was involved around shipping. So we can no longer do this with the cash that we had on hand. So because of the plum card from American Express and all of its benefits, it was a natural fit to help grow our business. And when someone calls and lets you know that you made their dinner, that's satisfaction that you can't get anywhere else. There's a new standard in assisted living. One that combines comfort, luxury, convenience, and the highest quality expert care. Your loved ones can experience it now in Canfield's premier senior living location. The Inn at Ironwood offers fine dining and amenities such as a concierge, salon, housekeeping, and laundry services. And a truly elegant setting in Canfield. Call us for more information or visit us and take a tour. The Inn at Ironwood, Canfield's premier senior living location. Ruli Brothers is way ahead of the competition. Check out Ruli Spice World, where you can buy bulk herbs and spices, plus candies, nuts, and fillings for pennies on the dollar. At Ruli Brothers Market, our family is in the store. Selling engagement rings never gets old. It's love. It's a huge untaking because they're gonna wear that ring probably forever, but if they're not gonna wear it forever, they're gonna pass it down to somebody. Our rings will hold a lifetime and we wanna make sure it does. We stand by every single thing that we sell. I believe I can find the perfect ring. I really try to get them exactly what she would want. And to just be a little part of that is really, it warms your heart inside. Get real, get Kamara. Linda is the owner and the artistry behind Lamb Handwoven Rugs. And that stands for Linda Ann Marie Bertanzetti. And I met her at the YSU Festival for the Arts. And I mean, you had hundreds of beautiful rugs and runners and wall hangings. And I just am fascinated with 
this Thank you. weaving. And you are gonna die when you see how many looms this woman has. And uh, I just could not wait to come out and do an interview with you. Thank you. So how did you get turned on to weaving? Well, it's kind of in my genes. My maternal grandfather wove baskets and I took a class at Hiram College with the master basket weaver from Shaker Hancock Village. My husband was just building my basket studio. I came home at the end of the week. I said, how do you like this? He goes, it's beautiful. I says, well, it's an Nantucket Lightship basket. And he goes, oh, that's great. He goes, how do you like the building? It's done. I says, that's nice, but I need a loom. He goes, what? I says, I need a weaving loom. And he goes, why? And I says, all these ladies that weave baskets have looms. And he was like, well, okay. He goes, where are we gonna put it? And I says, well, there's room in the studio for one. And he says, oh, well, okay. Well, I got one, it wasn't the right type. It was for fine weaving and not for rugs. So I needed another one. He goes, where are we gonna put it? I said, you have to build another building, Ralph. <laughs> so he built a building. Man, <laughs> He built a building, and we'll go into that one later. Um, it was one room. I could have three looms in there, but needless to say, I soon ran out of room because both of us started finding all these uh, looms in parts, and I just had an interest in seeing what they'd look like put together. Now, these that are hanging here seem to be mm -hmm. a lot different, a lot more of a, I'm not sure if the term is what, flat? Flat. Flat weaving. Mm -hmm. Flat weaving. Hello. I just learned that term. <laughs> just made it up. Uh, rather than these. And right. what is the difference here? What, okay. Why this, do people prefer this? The look. It depends on how you decorate. Probably nine out of ten people want to buy, have the textured wools mm -hmm. or the textured acrylics. Um, it's softer on your feet. They like the look. It's more modern. These are more old-fashioned. Um, people that like like country things or early American yes, things yes. or, you know, um, decorate in the 17, 1800s, they want flat wools. So this would be how they were weaving back then. This yeah, would be how yeah they didn't have looked. this type of stuff. Yes. Right, a lot of things were made out of rags, out of their people's clothes. Um, this is out of silk saris. Oh my gosh. And it's all silk. Beautiful silk. So and I washed everything and- um, Either so side. Either side, they're reversible. And it's just, just a beautiful piece. Something like this, I used. I love the muted tones in this. This is very muted, yes, it's lovely. Um, it's cuttings off of Pendleton's Indian blankets and bedspreads, and I, they sell this and then I weave with it. This is also cuttings off of their wool. So this is a shuttle. That's a shuttle. And then do I have to make sure it nope, is nope. straight or anything? No, not at all, just wind it on. You don't want to put too much on. You want to do maybe 20 wraps. You don't want to go beyond this thickness. Okay. So put it on tight. I already put in a header. Every piece is going to start out with a header and end with a header. This is what holds the weaving together. Okay. So that's already on there. So put your foot on a treadle. Either one? Well, we got to see which one is the right one to use. Okay, it's crossed. So that's what you need. So you need to put this through. Put the, the whole shuttle through. Oh, put the whole shuttle through. Push okay. it through. The middle? Put it, put it through there. Okay. Just push it through with the shuttle. You don't have to use your hand. Okay. Push it through. There you go. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Oh, okay. Where does it rest? It's going to rest here. Oh. And then you're going to have it on an angle, and you're going to use the beater. Now, pull it back. Okay. Give it a nice hard beat. And another one. There you go. So change. Oh my gosh. Okay. So change your feet. You got to use your other foot. And now you can see the threads have crossed again. And I'm going to shuttle it yes, through. Yes, but we're going to finish this. We don't want this end hanging. So we're going to tuck it in. We're just going to tuck it in there. Okay. So now you need to come through this side, but leave enough here so that it's, it's going to pass through. Okay. okay. And put it over here. Push it through. You don't have to use, there you go. Now we want to pinch. We want to keep it on an angle always, and we need to pinch the side. Why on an angle? If you didn't, and you had it straight like this, and you pulled it, it would start pulling the weaving in. And the colors are beautiful. I mean, it's random, but there is like a pattern to it almost. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just beautiful. Well, cheers. I, I'm going to um, come back a lot more often. Okay. You know, Linda says she serves gourmet lunches when she hosts her classes. 
And uh, I never go tape a segment where I get fed such great food, the peach kugel and stuffed mushrooms. Now, Linda, how can people get in touch with you if they'd like to purchase some of your rugs? Um, you know, what's the best way to reach you for classes? Call or email me. All right, and we'll put that information out. Okay. Now, every year you do shows. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the shows that you regularly sell your rugs? Okay, I go to George Washington's Mount Vernon on the Potomac and down in Virginia. September. That is mid-September, right? It's a fantastic show. The Revolutionary War is going on. There's, there's fire eaters, there's rope walkers. There's <laughs> just 43 people from around the country selling their wares. And I've been invited back for 10 years now, so it's a great experience. And then you're also Christmas in the Woods? I'm Christmas in the Woods at Shaker Woods, and that's in October for two weekends. I think it's the 8th and 9th, and then the following weekend. And then the YSU is where I, I met you. I guess YSU is over. That was in July. And then Butler, the Christmas show. The oh, first... and that's always the first weekend of December. Yes, uh-huh. All right. I mean, really, they're absolutely beautiful. You could learn the oldest art that we practically have. And this really has been a fun afternoon. Oh, good. Thank you for and coming. I cannot thank you enough, really, oh. for your hospitality. Oh. You've got to check it out. Cheers. Cheers. The Casey Malone Show is sponsored in part by Denise and John York and the DeBartlow Corporation.